Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce our work quasi-Newton methods for real-time simulation of hyper-elastic materials. I am Tian Tian Liu, a fifth-year PhD student from University of Pennsylvania. This is our joint work with Sophie and Boazes from EPFL and my advisor Ladislav Kavan from University of Utah. In this talk, I will try not only to cover the main idea of our paper, but also tell you the story of how we come up with that idea as well. Everything should be straightforward, so behold, and let's start. In real-time graphics applications, speed is not negotiable. For example, if you want to simulate a nice cape of a game character, or to interact with a virtual object in a VR environment, the simulation cannot be paused and the feedback needs to be instant. In offline applications, on the other hand, usually accuracy is a more important concern. The material parameters and the physical properties need to be carefully handled during the simulation. There are also applications, for example, virtual surgery, have both requirements on latency and accuracy. The goal of this project is to simulate a variety of hyperelastic materials, such as Neo Hokkien or STVK, or even some user-defined materials in real time. To be more specific, the method needs to be general to support an arbitrary material, it needs to be fast to give real-time response, and it is better to be simple to make the implementation fast and less likely to cause bugs. The classic work of deformable body simulation can be tracked back to Brockwood and Witkin's seminal work in class simulation in 1998. It integrated the class dynamics using implicit Euler solved by one Newton iteration. In 2007, Golden Sun and colleagues extended his work to simulate inextensible class. Two years ago, Tornier and colleagues proposed their stable constraint dynamics to support stiff materials simulations robustly. All those methods are running Newton's methods as a numerical solver, either on primal or dual space, which makes these methods unable to run in real time. On the other hand, position-based dynamics proposed by Müller and colleagues in 2007 provides a super-fast solution for soft-body simulation. At first, no one knows where PBD is converging to until MacLean's and colleagues introduced their extended position-based dynamics framework method last year. Um, both methods provide fast simulation solutions. However, they also share the same problem. The material property will be changed when running different numbers of iterations. The fewer iterations you run, the softer material you will have. Projective dynamics is another branch of fast deformable body simulation methods. It can be tracked back to a fast mass spring system simulator we proposed in 2013. And one year later, we further extended the framework to support FEM-based discretizations. Last year, Narain and colleagues did an amazing work showing projective dynamics can be understood as ADMM and thus generalized it to support more kinds of materials. In the year of 2015, Hua Ming Wang started a GPU acceleration of projective dynamics using the Chebyshev semi-iterative method. One year later, he and his colleague further extend this method to support more general materials. Both of the methods can be seen as a quasi-Newton method where system matrices are approximated by their diagonal elements and updated using Chebyshev iterations. Quasi-Newton methods are also gaining their popularity in geometry processing. The accelerated quadratic proxy method proposed by Kowalski and colleagues last year and scalable locally injective mappings proposed by Rabinovich and colleagues this year in SIGGRAPH are both using Laplace matrices to replace the system Hessian, and they report a better performance or even a better convergence behavior. So what is a quasi-Newton method? Let's take a look at a toy example. If we want to minimize a nonlinear function gx, a typical solution is to run Newton's method, where the gradient at a given point is measured. We then evaluate the curvature around the point using the second order derivative, which is the Hessian matrix, and the descent direction will be a direction that directly pointing us to the bottom of the valley, which can be computed using the negative Hessian inverse multiplied by the gradient. A quasi-Newton method is to say that instead of using the system matrix Hessian, we use some other positive definite matrices to compute the descent direction. It can be as simple as an identity matrix, which will degenerate this method into gradient descent, 
and apparently, carefully picking a proper Hessian approximation will be the key to make it converge fast. And how to pick this matrix? Let's try to find some hints in projective dynamics then. In the following two minutes, I will cover a full projective dynamics tutorial. Projective dynamics start to formulate the system energy as the sum of square distance between every element's deformation gradient than its corresponding projection. Here x is a state vector encoding the position of every vertex, gix as a whole is the deformation gradient of the i's element, and pi is a corresponding projection. The target manifold can be arbitrary, it can be SO3, it can be SL3, or even some example-based manifold. Under this problem formulation, projective dynamics is actually solving a system with many more degrees of freedom as shown in the second equation here. Whereas this p vector is an aggregated vector containing all projections, a and b are just a constant matrices and c is a constant vector. Luckily, this new system is very easy to solve because once the posi position x is fixed, the po projection of every element is independent. We can solve them in parallel. We call this step the local step. Once the projection P is fixed, solving for X becomes a perfect quadratic problem with a constant system matrix A. We even know the analytical solution here. The optimal X star will be negative A inverse multiplied by BP plus C. And this inverse is not horrible at all because A is a constant matrix, we can just prefactorize it into LL transpose so the runtime linear solver only requires a forward backward substitution. We call this step the global step. By the way, once we see projective dynamics in this formula, the limitation is also straightforward. If an energy cannot be defined in this quadratic distance form, it will not be able to solve using projective dynamics. In fact, most of the energies we'd like to use in FEM simulations such as co-rotated linear elasticity STPK, or nail hookian cannot be represented in this form. There are even more complicated materials defined by users that be even beyond the reach of projective dynamics. For example, in SIGGRAPH 2015, Xu and colleagues introduced this spline-based material, which allows users to change the material stiffness under a specific range of deformation. So the squirrel head using this material can be stiff enough to maintain its overall shape under impulsive motions while being soft enough to show the jiggly movement of the cheek under gentle motions. We were amazed by this work and started to ask ourselves, can we even simulate this guy in real time? We began our thought from projective dynamics where the state vector x and the projection vector p are separately defined as independent variables. What if instead we define p as an implicit function of x? Now the objective of projective dynamics energy has only one variable x now, and it resembles the energy of a general materials more. But how can we minimize it? First things first, since we had no idea how to minimize it, we tried to compute the gradient of the energy, because what else can we do, alright? We apply the chain rule to it, so the gradient becomes two parts. One nice part with AX plus BP plus C, and one nasty part which includes the Jacobian matrix grad P over X. Note that the projection function is usually implicitly defined, computing the Jacobian becomes really a problem. But fortunately, the second term is always zero projected for a projected dynamics kind of energy. Let's see why. Here is a naive geometric interpretation of it where gx is a deformation gradient and p is a projection on a wanted manifold. The differential of the quadratic distance can also be decoupled into two terms, where the second term is exactly the troublemaking one. Notice that the differential of the projection itself is always orthogonal to the vector gx minus p because p is a projection and its differential works along the tangent plane of the manifold. The second term immediately goes to zero. That's why the Jacobian term goes away in the previous slide. If you want to more, if you want a more precise proof of it, please refer to our paper for more details. Now we can get rid of the lost term, leaving only the clean ones in the gradient. Assuming A is not a singular matrix, we can multiply A inverse to both sides of the equation, leading us to this new equation. And if you still remember what A inverse BP plus C is, 
it is exactly the optimal solution of the global step of projective dynamics with a negative sign. So let's rearrange this equation. We can see that the optimal solution after one iteration of projective dynamics is actually x minus a inverse multiplied by the gradient of the objective. And that is the aha moment because it is so similar compared to one Newton step. The only difference is that uh, in one Newton step, the step size alpha is usually decided by the line search, and uh, in one Newton step, the curvature is usually measured by the exact Hessian matrix. While in projective dynamics, the alpha is always set to 1, and the system matrix A um, is weighted Laplacian matrix regularized by the math matrix. You can find the derivation of this matrix in projective dynamics or even in the fast mass brain paper. But uh, that's not important. The important thing is uh, this is a constant positive definite matrix, and applying this matrix as an Hessian approximation seems to be working well in a quasi Newton method because projective dynamics is now just a quasi Newton method applied on its own specific type of energy. This kind of quasi Newton update can actually be used for any materials. There's no reason for preventing us using that because A is a positive definite matrix. Negative A inverse multiplied by the gradient is guaranteed to be a descent direction. But the catch is now we need to run line search to safeguard the quasi Newton iterations and we need to define a proper weight for the Laplacian matrix. The weight in projective dynamics type of energy is easy because the string stress curve is linear for PD materials with the slope exactly equals to the material stiffness. However, now we are working on a more general nonlinear material. We first try to use the tangent direction at the rest post, but it might fail because some user-defined materials have no force feedback at all at the rest post. We then set the deformation range around the rest post from some certain compression to some certain elongation. We run a linear regression to find the best fit line and use the slope of that line as the weight parameter of the Laplacian matrix. Note that as long as the material property is not changing on the fly, we don't need to reevaluate this weight during the simulation. We try different experiments to test the effects from different window sizes, and finally choose 10% compression and elongation as our window. Please refer to our paper to see more discussion on that. After this observation, we can already simulate a variety of materials. This is a dropping ditto scenario. It's one of my favorite Pokemon with different materials, including corrotated linear elasticity, synth veneer Kirchhoff, nail hookim, and lots of user defined spline materials. And we can do even more. Because in spite of generalization of different materials, this quasi Newton observation can help us in convergence as well. For example, we can apply LBFGS to accelerate it. This is a picture of literally B, F, G, and S. The key idea of LBFGS method is to approximate the curvature by tracking down the history instead of using the exact Hessian matrix. Back in the days, people usually started LBFGS from an identity matrix because there's no better priors, and it requires hundreds of thousands of iterations to converge. But now, we can warm store LBFGS using our Hessian approximation, and we'll see what will happen. We construct a test case of claw simulation by holding the left end and shaking the right end. Both our method and projective dynamics are running 10 iterations per frame. As you can see, our method in the middle resembles the exact solution on the bottom more, while projective dynamics damps the motion more when not converged well. Other than this contrived case, this artifact of projective dynamics will be reflected in high frequency components in more realistic simulations, for instance, wrinkles in cloud simulation. Aided by LBFGS, our method can produce better wrinkles compared to projective dynamics, as I highlighted in the red circle. Note that our method converges fast not solely because of LBFGS. We tried other matrices to warm store LBFGS and compare our method to. One intuitive guess is to use the rest post Hessian matrix. Here, both the brown line and the yellow line are using the rest post Hessian as a Hessian approximation in two different configurations. And the blue line is our method on both configurations. 
It seems our method is not so much better in this case by taking the first glance, but let's explain the experiments more carefully. We initialize the cube with a slightly stretch on the horizontal direction, as shown in configuration 1. In that case, using the rest post Hessian as a Hessian approximation surely works very well because even the exact Hessian matrix is not departing too much from the rest post Hessian. Configuration 2 is the same with config 1 but added an extra 90 degrees rotation. In this case, the rest post Hessian started to choke immediately. Meanwhile, our Hessian approximation remains the same no matter how we rotate the scene because the Laplacian matrix itself is rotational invariant. In more general cases where all elements can depart farther away from their rest poses, not only from rotation, but from shearing, stretching, twisting, bending, and so on as well, the rest post Hessian will work even worse, as shown in the yellow line, compared to our Hessian approximation, as shown in the blue line. Here, the vertical axis is the relative error of the objective energy in logarithm scale, and the horizontal axis on the left figure is the time in seconds, and on the right is the number of iterations. We can see that our method excels in both measurements. Scaled Identity Matrix is the textbook initialization for LBFGS methods, and it is also the default option for most of the third-party library implementations. Of course, it works even worse because it lacks of the information from the mesh and from the material. One interesting thought is to evaluate and factorize the Hessian matrix at the beginning of every frame as shown in the green line. It runs effectively in terms of the number of iterations as shown in the right figure. However, the first iteration that requires Hessian computing and matrix factorization is already too slow for real-time purposes. We tested our method against lots of Hessian approximations in the LBFGS family and find our method outperforms all of them. We also tested our method against iterative methods such as preconditioned conjugate gradient methods and drew the same conclusion. I'm not trying to go over all the comparisons here one by one. If you are interested in more details about our work, please refer to our paper. There, there is a five-page results section full of statistics and comparisons and implementation details such as line search options, history window choice, and so on. Let me show more results using, using the remaining time. Our method is accurate. In this twisting bar simulation, we run 10 iterations of our method, and it already looks indistinguishable compared to the exact solution simulated using converged Newton's method on the bottom. Our method is stable. We randomize the vertices of a hippo, this is a hippo, and release it. It soon hit recovered to its rest pose robustly. Um, uh, this is my personal favorite. We can also use our method to squeeze a big bug bunny through the small torus. And we can use our method to simulate even anisotropic materials as well, as shown on the right. Last but not least, of course, we can go back and simulate the awesome material that I mentioned at the beginning, the spline-based material in real time too. On the left, this is a standard nail Hokkien material. The middle one is a modified nail Hokkien that resists compression more, and on the right, it is the same material but it resists more on stretching. To summarize, our method is a general method that can support different kinds of materials. It is a order of magnitude faster compared to Newton's method to achieve similar accuracy level, and it can be truncated even earlier to meet real-time requirements. It is simple to implement. If you have a descent method implemented, you can just replace the original descent direction computation using our quasi-Newton update rule, and that's it. There's no need to evaluate the Hessian matrix anymore, and there's no need to do definiteness fix anymore. Um, as possible future work, we definitely want to do more generalization, include relaxation, creep, and hysteresis in our simulations. We want to make the performance of our method less influenced by collisions and topology changes, because those changes usually cause for the update of the Laplacian matrix. Although all the examples that I showed are still using a static Laplacian, it might end up with larger numbers of iterations, but it's still tolerable. But in collision-dominant situations, or in cases where the mesh topology, topology changes a lot, it might not be suffice. 
All the examples we ran are using implicit Euler as a temporal integrator. There are our integrators have better long-term energy behavior and angular momentum behavior, but they are either too slow or prone to explode in large time steps. We want to investigate a fast and stable integrator which has better energy and angular momentum conservation properties. We are also looking forward to applying our method to more applications as well, such as in VR or fast prototyping for fabrications. We thank the anonymous reviewers, our friends, and our colleagues for helping us to make this paper better, and we thank our funding agencies for their kind support. That should conclude my talk today. This is my website. I will release the code base after I clean it up and upload the recorded presentation here as well. Thank you so much for listening.